It's a trap. A glowing, bubbling, corrosive acid pit. How did I fit three LEDs, three batteries, and a 3 by 3 foam square? I'm going to show you how to do it this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're jumping back into our trap series, and we're finally getting to a trap that I've been wanting to do for quite some time now. And if you're new to crafting, this is the perfect opportunity for you to jump into resin and LEDs, two things that you should not be worried about or afraid to work with when crafting for your tabletop games. Now, when it comes to traps, I think a lot of times they're really overlooked with the excitement that can be had with them in game. A lot of times it's, oh, there's a trap, give me a roll, move on, and that's the end of it. But I think when you add some good dialogue to the, um, the encounter in a dungeon or wherever you're going to be, coupled with a really cool craft or some lights or just something really neat on the table, it can really add a lot of immersion to the game and a lot of excitement. So if you're ready to build and add this to your collection, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so I wanted to take this opportunity to show you how I get a perfect square 3x3 three three piece of foam. The piece that I'm pushing up against the high fence on the Proxon right there is a straight line. You can see the piece that I cut off obviously wasn't, but now we have two parallel lines. That's the easy part. Now what I want to do is I'm going to slide this next portion up against the high fence vertically. And that looks like it's square, but it's not. There's actually a little curve to it. So pushing that along the high fence vertically like that um, takes out a lot of room for error because it's only a short distance that I have to cut. But I can be off now a little bit in um, the up and down direction. So I'm going to slide the fence a little bit closer now to the wire. Run it through one more time. Now in all directions, this piece of foam is exactly square um, on those two top corners. Now obviously we got a straight line. We can now set the high fence with a framing square. It's what I love to use. I think it is an absolute must tool when you have a prox on to have this for setting you know, your distances here. Now we can run the foam back through the prox on along that high fence at whatever distance we want. In this case, it's a three by three square and it's going to be exactly square on all four corners. Okay, so now we're going to work on our LEDs. If you've seen my video last week, the campfire, that's roughly what we're going to be doing here. So we burned a couple of holes in that one inch round miniature base. Now we're going to spread the leads on the diode. And we're going to set this up just as you see here. Again, it's the same way that we did in the campfire video. And these come with uh, resistors that you can use if you want. But again, I don't have any issue going straight from the battery to the LED without using resistors and having any issue. But you, know, you could hook those up with a soldering iron if you wanted to go that route. All right, now we've got those all set aside. I'm going to grab this Reaper Skeletal Spearman and we're going to put him on the side of this acid trap. So I'm taking this post-it note. Just so happens that post-it notes are a three by three square. And I drew out the shape of my acid pool. And now I'm going to draw on my three diodes right onto the paper so I have an exact location. Now you can see some of those are pretty close to the edge. No problem, that's why we do it on the paper. We just adjust the size of the acid pool and we can keep going. Now it might be a little hard to see, but I can see through this paper and I can see my marks for where the exact location of these one inch bases are going on the other side. And I'm just tracing them out now onto the back side. That's gonna be important a little bit later on in the video. Okay, so again, as you can see, perfect three by three square. We can now transfer all of this shape of the acid pool and where the exact one inch round miniature bases are gonna go right onto the foam. 
Now, simply by doing that little maneuver with the uh, post-it note, we now have the location on the bottom of this foam where we need to cut in our round miniature bases for our diodes. And just press those nice and hard right into the base. That way you can see those when you're done and we can cut those out. So I'm just using an X-Acto knife and I'm going down probably close to just shy of maybe a quarter of an inch into this base. Cut that out with an X-Acto, use the clay sculpting tool as I do in a lot of my videos to carve out these little chunks. And you just wanna make sure that you're not going like beyond halfway. You wanna get this base maybe an eighth of an inch into the foam from the bottom, not so that it's flush, but you know, you're trying to get some room for that base to be in there, as well as the battery that we're gonna put into it as well. So a cool little trick, you can actually use your hot glue gun. I'm not actually applying glue here. You can use your gun to melt the foam a little bit. It'll stiffen up the foam a little, and it'll help you get that extra little depth without worrying about going all the way through to the other side. So now, very carefully, we're gonna use our X-Acto knife to carve in the shape of the acid pool at an angle. Now we're trying very carefully not to go through to where the miniature bases are on the bottom of this. If you do, you can you know fix that pretty easily um, with some hot glue a little bit later on in the video. And again, we're just using the hot glue gun here to add a really cool melted effect to the edge of the acid pool. Now what I'm gonna do to make sure, in case I had any little holes when I was carving this out, I'm adding a little bit of hot glue and I'm melting the bottom of this to get a nice hard bottom to the acid pool on this trap. And it's also sealing it in again so I don't have to worry about the resin leaking through when I pour it. Okay, simply we're gonna add a little bit of texture to it with some aluminum foil. And now we're gonna heat up this pin and we're gonna poke a few holes through here just to add some, like the acid's kind of eating away at the stone. And this takes a little bit of time. It maybe took me 15 minutes to go around the entire perimeter of this acid pool, but it gives a really cool effect uh, when you're done. Okay, now all I did was press in the miniature base with the diode on it to find the dead center, and I'm just using a heated up pin to poke all the way through. Once that's done, a little bit of Mod Podge again helps just seal it just that much more in case we missed any spots before we pour the resin. And now I'm going to paint this stone up exactly how I paint all my dungeon tiles. I'll put a link up above to my HD dungeon tile video um, to get the exact paint job for that. Now, these are the paints I use for my acid effect. And I recommend painting the entire stone first before you do any of this. So you're gonna wanna bring it up with a couple of different colors of gray, hit it up with a wash, um, I was just really excited to get the paint on here, and I actually kind of forgot to do that. But you can see it's possible to do it this way. But once you do the, the stonework first, then you can come back, follow this portion of the, the video um, to get your, your paint down on the, uh, on the trap here. And all we're doing is wet blending all these different green colors in. We're starting with the darkest at the very center where the acid pool would be the deepest. And we're gonna work around and around to the edge lighter and lighter with these different colors. And when you get to the yellow, this one here on the edge, it would help if you almost use the new brush or wash this one out completely because any greed in that will really knock down that bright yellow pretty quick. And we really want some nice contrasting colors here to make this acid pool you know, really pop when we're done. Okay, now I'm kind of working backwards here a little bit. We're gonna do a little dry brush on the stone. And this is the portion, you know, where you can really see how the, the acid that ate away at the edge of this pool looks really cool. But you can see how this is also gonna get a little bit of light gray on that green effect. So I had to go back when I was done with all this and hit it up with a little bit more paint. Now here I am very carefully putting some black wash down. Again, you can be you know as sloppy as you want to with this part if you you know paint the whole stonework up first and then do your, your uh, acid effect. And here I'm just doing a very light dry brush of a, a light gray, kind of to make, again, to make that acidy erosion or corrosion portion stand out. 
Now a nice light dry brush of this, almost like a neon yellow uh, paint. And we're gonna put this over where all those little acid burn marks are in the stone. All right, now I've got a clean brush and I'm grabbing some of that same yellow and I'm gonna go around the entire perimeter of the acid pool. And we're just gonna blend that into you know the darker color towards the center. And you should be left with something roughly like that when you're done. Okay, so this is where I destroy my clippers. <laughs> this, uh, this base here was extremely thick. This skeleton was standing on like a huge rock. And right about here, there goes my clippers. I snapped them right off. Um, you know, I ended up not even needing the bottom half of the skeleton. But anyway, we'll save him for later. Now I'm gonna add some kind of like corrosion or like his shield was melted away by this acid pool. You'll see how we're gonna place this in a minute. And I'm just using some files just to kind of get it, you know, to look how I want here. So by placing him on the edge, right where his spine is and where that um, shield is, it's gonna look like all that was melted away by the acid pool when we're done. Now, this is really cool. I gotta give credit to my daughter for this. I was talking to her about this and how I wanted to have these really cool looking bubbles and we we're trying to figure it out. And she's like, dad, what about your LED crystal video? Why don't you make them out of glue sticks? And it was just like, I couldn't believe I didn't think of that. <laughs> so that's all we're doing here. We're just gonna form a little bit of a point on a glue stick and we're gonna melt it. Again, you wanna make sure you don't burn it at all because if you do, it's gonna turn black and it's not gonna look good. Cool it down and you should be left with a really cool looking bubble just like that. Now, as you can see, this is a small glue stick. I did a few different sizes. I used the small glue stick, the large, and then you can also take a lot of glue off of a large glue stick and make, and then burn it, and have like a medium-sized bubble too. So make a whole bunch of these, and then just heat them up with a uh, lighter, and then press them together. And these could be used for anything. I mean, you could make these look like, you know, eggs, spider eggs, or, you know, bubbles, or, or whatever you want. These really came out awesome. I love the way these look. And I'm just pressing these down on some parchment paper so I can work with it and it won't stick once it cools. Okay, so now we're gonna place a good amount of hot glue around the perimeter of the bottom of that bubble set, I guess, and press it into the acid pool. You wanna have a nice seal here so that when you pour your resin, it's not gonna leak underneath because that will destroy the entire project. Once we have these in place, we're gonna use our hot glue gun to press up into those holes to make room for the LEDs. Now we're gonna paint up the miniature here. I've based him in some black primer by Vallejo and we're just using a few basic colors to paint him up. Again, the main eye or the main attractant to this piece is obviously the acid pool. But we want to do justice to this Reaper miniature. So we're going to use some lead belcher to paint up all the metal. This is what he looks like base before we do any washes or any rust effect. And now this is a little bit of known oil. We're going to paint this over all of the metal. And then we'll take a little Agrax earth shade to hit up all of the uh, bone white color. All right, now this is a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying this rust effect method. We'll take a little bit of typhus corrosion and we're gonna paint that right on top of the lead belcher paint, all of the metal. And this actually has a little bit of grit inside of it so it adds some texture to that as well so it really looks like it's corroded and once we have done that we're going to take a little riser rust it's also by games workshop and we're going to get most of that off the brush and then just dry brush pretty heavy all of the metal and it's going to give it a really really cool rust effect
And I know it doesn't look like a lot, but once you've, you know, edge highlighted, um, you know, this whole set right here, this whole miniature, it really does uh, stand out and it looks really cool. Okay, so I drilled and pinned the back of the Reaper miniature uh, with a paper clip and we're just gonna add a little hot glue and press them right into place. And uh, that actually holds him in there really nice. And press him in there enough so that his spine and the shield go into the acid pool just a little bit. All right, so I've already added my two-part resin in here and I'm adding some of this Hex Wraith Flame, I think, something like that. Yeah, right, <laughs> I've got it written down right there. Hex Wraith Flame. We're gonna add some of that and a little green Vallejo ink and we're gonna mix this up. Now you're gonna see a major no-no when it comes to mixing resin, but I did it on purpose. I'm going to mix this very vigorously because I want it to have a lot of air pockets, a lot of air bubbles in this resin so that it looked kind of almost frothy a little bit once it cured. And you can see all the air bubbles in it. And we're gonna pour that right over all of the glue stick bubbles that we made and keep your fingers crossed right now too that you've uh, got a good seal by the way all right now we're going to set that aside and let that cure we're going to take a little uh, chipboard and we're going to make a base for this to help hold the magnets in place while we have this lit up and you've seen this method on my channel all we're doing here is marking some spots for some uh, magnets and we're gonna press the chipboard down and when we pull it off, we'll have an exact location on both pieces um, so we know where to put the magnets. Now I'm using obviously this little hot wire knife right here to uh, make the hole. And I only ended up using two magnets, one in each corner. I didn't put that middle one in. It doesn't need it. And you wanna make these holes deep enough so that you can fit obviously both magnets into that hole because it needs to sit flush. So, you know, you again, you could probably do this step earlier <laughs> before you have the whole finished product and it's all painted up because if you go all the way through, then you're gonna have a problem. So as you can see, all I'm doing is hot gluing the magnet right to the chipboard. And that would hold on fine probably all by itself, but we're gonna take it a step further, add a little bit of super glue and we're gonna coat the entire magnet and this thing's held on there really nice. And that's just a little bit of accelerant that I'm putting on there to help cure the super glue a little bit faster so I can keep moving and, um, and finish the project. So I hope you're enjoying this trap series as much as I am. And I really appreciate all of your suggestions and ideas for future trap videos. Keep those coming. Leave a comment down below as to what you'd like to see. I have been keeping a list of all of those and I plan on hopefully tackling uh, most of them in the future on this channel. Now, I have a really big announcement about the channel and something that's coming up. You see, I told myself when I first started the channel um, almost a year ago that I was going to try for one to two of my epic builds in a year. And that was the castle and my Colosseum. And I loved making those and it is a lot of work. And that led to a third epic build, which was my Dwarven series with Scott Ismail uh, a few weeks back. And that was a lot of fun. And because I'm, I guess, a glutton for punishment, uh, I jumped into, yes, a fourth epic build that I'm hoping to release by the end of 
my first year here on YouTube, which will be sometime in October. And I don't want to get into too much detail as to what this epic build is, but it is a collaboration with a really awesome, genuine person who I love um, speaking with and is uh, going to be working with me on this video. So I'm really excited. I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to give too much away. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. You don't want to miss out on this fourth epic build that's coming out sometime in the near future here on Tabletop Witchcraft. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.